When I mentioned to friends that I was researching vanilla, one of them told me this story. I once took part in a workshop by supposedly the best ice cream maker in Germany. The price of vanilla pods is a significant amount, and he was not happy enough with the taste of vanilla alone, so he replaced half of the vanilla with Tonka beans. I had never even heard of Tonka beans before this story, so I was curious to find an ice cream or some food that used them and try them out. But it turns out, in the United States, they're illegal as a food additive. Apparently they're too toxic. Well, that would explain why I've never seen them before. But they are used in Europe. If I do a Google search, I can find plenty of recipes calling for Tonka beans, so they can't be that toxic. What's the deal? I love how access to information and the internet allows curious folk like me to find some answers. So here's what I found out. Tonka beans are the seeds of fruit from trees in South America valued for their scent. Popular in perfumes and cosmetics, used in Latin American cooking for centuries, you might say Tonka was the original imitation vanilla. It has a similar flavor. And the same way that vanillin is the distinctive flavor compound for vanilla, Tonka beans have coumarin. And especially after we figured out how to synthesize coumarin, it wasn't uncommon to find it as a food additive in the 1900s, especially in vanilla flavoring. Check out this bottle of Watkins brand flavoring. Not sure how old it is, but it must be pretty old because it proudly displays coumarin on the bottle. But in 1954, coumarin was added to the FDA's list of additives prohibited for use in food, both the pure compound and the tonka bean itself. I trace this back to a New York Times article. A large company tested the substance and found that rats, given large doses, developed liver trouble. They reported the finding to the FDA, suppliers withdrew coumarin from the market voluntarily, and the following year, the FDA placed the ban. In many other countries, they don't forbid its use. They simply limit the amount that can be present. Many high-end chefs in the United States like Tonka beans so much that they not so secretly admit to using them in their restaurants. Also, I was able to find a brand of vanilla flavoring in a store near me that had coumarin listed in the ingredients. I'm not sure what to think of that, honestly. Make of it what you will, I guess. So how dangerous is coumarin? Is the ban justified? Probably not. Coumarin is also in kasha cinnamon at pretty high concentrations, and cinnamon's not banned. Even this article, also from the New York Times in 1953, a year before the ban, reports no case of human illness has been traced to coumarin. The previous article I referenced actually came out a few years after the ban, in 1959, and as a whole it reports how laws were changing to make the FDA better able to judge food additives by levels of tolerance, rather than banning them if there's any risk. And it cites coumarin as a case where an outright ban was a mistake. The burden of testing is on food manufacturers, and enforcing such laws is really hard. I get the feeling that it's not a perfect system, like most things. Food safety is a hugely complicated thing, and it evolves slowly over time. But still, imagine sometime a while back it was reported that dogs who ate chocolate became sick and died, and from that point on, chocolate was banned. That would be unfortunate, and certainly an overreaction. I love you, buddy, but if you made chocolate illegal, I would be upset. Recent studies have followed up on coumarin and still report very low likelihood of toxic effect. We literally metabolize it differently than rats do. Disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. Some people may be sensitive or small children can have higher risk, of course. But all things in moderation. Tonka beans are used like nutmeg, a few shavings at a time. So dosage is a factor too and toxicity is slowly built up over time. You're way more likely to overdose on daily use of cinnamon, where quantities as little as a teaspoon can put you over recommended limits, though it's not that simple. There are reports that coumarin levels vary in cinnamon even when harvested from the same tree. For tonka beans, it's reported that 30 entire beans would need to be eaten to approach the levels reported as toxic about the same volume at which nutmeg and other everyday spices are toxic. Read that last line again. Everyday spices are toxic. That's a fact of life. Nature is full of things that are tasty and dangerous at the same time. As a gardener, I know that lots of herbs and spices are like nature's pesticides. They contain these potent chemicals that protect them from insects, so you interplant them in your vegetable garden to act as pest repellent. But to humans, those chemicals are novel and inviting. 
and Tonka beans piqued my curiosity enough to make me buy a few of them. They're a bit pricey in small quantities, one or two dollars each, but I've tried them in my tea and coffee, and it is a nice flavor. I see the appeal. I wouldn't go out of my way for them. I'd rather have vanilla anyway, but in witchcraft, they hold unique value. They're thought to be lucky. They grant wishes or encourage money and love in your life. So maybe I should always keep some Tonka beans with me. As long as they don't make me fall in love with a rat, I think I'll be fine.